One of the first companies I learned about when I started my dividend investing journey was actually Scott's Mill Growth Stock Ticker SMG. For some reason, it's also the first company a lot of other people started out with and it's easy to understand why, their products is easy to understand and there is a big potential growth catalyst in the Hawthorne segment for cannabis production. If you look at the price chart during the pandemic, it's also easy to see that the demand went up quite high due to people spending more time at home. People had more income on hand they couldn't dispose of, so they actually spent a lot of time improving their own homes. Also, obviously, the lawn care and so on. So there was a big demand for Scott's Milk Gross products in that time period. But ever since the height of the pandemic, the demand has actually weaseled out a little bit. So you can see right now it's actually started to decline a lot ever since. And if you look at the year to date numbers, they are up 15% and you can see here down in the end, there's a major blip where everything just went south suddenly. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can see here during the last five days, there was a drop of almost 18%. And the reason behind this major drop of 18% was that Scott Smoke Grow it released their earnings and they missed both on the top line and the bottom line. As you can see here, $1.17 in non-GAAP EPS missed by 29 cents, revenue of $1.12 billion missed by $40 million. And more importantly, you can see that the Hawthorne segment declined by 40%. So that's a major dent in the growth story that uh, Scott Smoke Grow would like to sell about their cannabis production and the Hawthorne segment they do have. The management do expect total net sales to decline approximately 10 to 11 percent, mainly driven by a net sales decline in the US consumer section of 2 to 4 percent and a net sales decline of 30 to 35 percent in the Hawthorne segment. So you might start to wonder if this management is the right one to bring forward Scott's Milk Grow in the future. As a dividend stock, they had actually had pretty good dividend growth over the last few years. You can see here the graph is kind of like how you want to see it up and to the right. Over the last five years, they have grown the dividend average of 5% per year and over the last 10 years, an average of 8% per year. But look at this here on the left, latest 0% growth since August 21. And if you look at the payment details, it is indeed quarterly March, June, September and December. But as you can see here, the reason and upcoming dividends have remained the same of 66 cents since September 21. And it is indeed very difficult to see where the growth should come from when we just heard about the major miss on their earnings. However, Simply Safe dividends are still giving Scott Milk Grow a rating of 50, which is borderline safe, as you can see here. And it was downgraded back in September 22 from 70, which is a safe rating, down to the 50 to the borderline rating that we see now. If you look at some of the numbers also from charts from Simply Safe dividends, it could be potentially a good time to invest in Scott's Milk Grow if you do like the prospect of the company and the long-term outlook, because as you can see here, the dividend yield are way above the five-year average, sitting at around 4.6%, where the five-year average, uh, five average being 2.25%. Also, forward PE ratio is roughly in line with the five-year average. And all of this could obviously be a little blip and a transient time in the company story, because as you can see here on the payout ratios, it is sitting normally pretty sweet behind or below 60% at roughly 50 to 55, 58, 60%. As you can see here during the pandemic, they obviously had way higher revenues. So that's why we, what we see here is on 27 and 33%. Also from the free cash flow ratio, it's a bit more up and down, but as you can see, it should sit roughly in that below 60% area that we would like it to be at. Also taking a closer look at the earnings per share growth and the sales growth, as you can see, it is indeed very cyclical up and down and all over the place. So if you are looking for something more steady, Scott's Milgro might not be the play you want to get into. But they are trying to return value to shareholders by reducing the number of shares outstanding. And you can see here on the graph on the left. And also if we take out some of the uh, weird years during the pandemic, then we can actually see that the total sales from Scott's Milgro have actually been steadily rising over the last 10 years or so. And that is also something that is looking pretty good for the future prospects of Scott's Milk Grow. However, something I don't really want to see is the return on equity being that low. But in general, as the history says here, you can see on the graph on the left, they do normally return way above the 10% on return on equity and the same story on return on invested capital. They are a bit low now of just 10% from the last 12 months, but usually that sits around the 14 to 25% mark, which is indeed very nice to see. Martins are obviously also hit quite a lot, but as you can see here, they usually have pretty good margins above 12% and also free cash for margin, a bit more unpredictable, but in general, they are looking pretty good. However, the balance sheet aren't looking that strong right now. They have a 
bit high net debt to EBITDA ratio and also a bit net debt to capital ratio. I would like to see it at a lower level, but obviously this could just be a very transient uh, event right now because as you can see here net debt to EBITDA is usually around the 3% or lower ratio, which is probably where you want to see. It is indeed leveraged, but not too highly. If we take a look at what Wall Street means, the analyst from Wall Street actually has it rated as a buy, where actually five analysts has it as a strong buy, one has it as a buy, four as a hold, and only one as a sell, which is pretty good because there's 11 analysts covering it and only one out of 11 actually has it as a sell, the others hold or better. And a funny little detail to that is actually the price target from the analyst. The average price target is around $76, which indicates a 32% upside from the current levels. So there is indeed some good things about Scott Milgro and there are indeed also some bad things. But if you are interested in the company, we definitely don't want to overpay for the stock. So to find out the intrinsic value of Scott Milgro, we do have our stock screening where we started to jump in. And we do have all of these key metrics and margins and so on that we've just went through in all the other. I will use this to calculate a margin of safety when we jump into the summary later. So let's start to take a look at the dividend stats and let's zoom in a bit so we can see everything a little bit better. We have touched upon this a little bit, but as you can see, what we really want normally is actually just a steady growth rate in the dividend and as you can see here it has actually had a pretty steady one between three to six percent for the um some of the years during the last 10 years but then since 22 that actually hasn't grown at all but still, if they could come back to the dividend growth rate of around 6 to 6%, it would definitely be pretty good going forward. But let's see all the different valuation models we do have. First one, we do have the discount cash flow, where we calculate an intrinsic value based on the free cash flow in the company and the projected future free cash flows. We also are using the dividend discount model, where we take the dividend payouts and calculate an intrinsic value based on that. We also have the multiples valuation, where we take some of its peers to Scott's Miracle Grow, calculate a stop price based on their PE multiples and the average median of those two. Also, Graham's revised valuation model we also use to estimate the intrinsic value as well as the price to earnings valuation based on the last five year PE ratio from Scott's Milgro. Similar to that, we do have the free cash flow valuation where we do the same just based on the free cash flow. And lastly, we do have the Peter Lynch formula where we do calculate an intrinsic value based on the growth rate, the dividend yield and the PE ratio of Scott's Milgro. So before we jump into the summary, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Now let's jump into the summary where we do have our valuation methods mentioned here. I have also introduced the analyst target price to give a bit of broader basis for the calculation. As you can see here, the discount of cash flow model is negative, so I will be excluding that one. That gives us an average of all the other valuation methods of $75, pretty close to the analyst target price of 76. So that could indicate that we are at least in accordance with the analyst, at least on the intrinsic value. But since a lot of these valuation methods are based on estimates, we also want to incorporate a margin of safety. And to do that, we do have a margin of safety calculator over here on the right. And the way that it works is that it starts with a standard of 25% margin of safety. And then depending on some of the key metrics, such as the EPS growth, the return on investive capital and so on, it either adds or deducts a few points into the margin of safety. So in this case, it actually starts with 25 then it's less than 10 plus 5 brings us back at 20 then for the payout ratio for some reason it doesn't calculate this one but it is indeed also plus 5 which is 25 and then again the operating margins is also plus 5 that gives us a margin of safety of 30 percent so if you go over here and punch in 30 percent then it gives us an acceptable buy price of 52 dollars and 53 cents pretty darn close to the current price so I would indeed, if you are interested in and do believe the long-term outlooks of Scotch Milk will grow, the catalyst is there. I'm personally a bit in doubt about the management's um, ability to execute on that catalyst, at least for uh, the near future. I personally don't believe in them right now. But if you do believe them, then I would say that the acceptable buy price is pretty darn close to the current price. And with a margin of safety of 30%, there is indeed also a pretty high margin of safety if you want to go into the stock at the current levels. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to leave a like on the video it would help out with the algorithm ever so much. Please subscribe to the channel for future videos and then I will be seeing you hopefully in the next video.